गुड मॉर्निंग सो दिस इज अवर ट्वेंटी थर्ड लेक्चर एंड वी हैव स्टार्टेड अवर डिस्कशन येस्टरडे ऑन द बर्नॉलीज इक्वेशन वाई आर डूइंग द बर्नॉलीज इक्वेशन वट वी हैव डन एक्चुअली वी हैव टेकन अ स्ट्रीम ट्यूब एंड अलॉन्ग दैट स्ट्रीम ट्यूब एक्चुअली वी हैव फर्स्ट रिटर्न द कंटिन्यूटी इक्वेशन यूजिंग द रनोल ट्रांसपोर्ट थ्योरम कंजर्वेशन ऑफ मास एंड देन वी हैव रिटर्न द लीनियर मोमेंटम इक्वेशन ओके एंड फ्रॉम द लीनियर मोमेंटम इक्वेशन दिस वॉज द last equation we have we stopped yesterday so now we will continue from this point so what i will do now is actually uh, if you typically see here i have uh, uh, nothing but two variables inside the single derivative so i will apply chain rule over here okay so if i do so then i will be getting minus adp minus rho g adz will be equal to del rho by del t into velocity times dv bar okay plus rho times del v by del t into dv bar okay and similarly i will be getting plus m dot times dv plus v times dm dot fine so now if you see this particular term over here so velocity is common over here what is this correct was it dv bar only or something else dv bar okay okay so now we will be having minus adp minus rho g a dz equal to now let us take this v common okay so if i take this v common out of these two terms dm dot and uh, this particular del rho by del t so if i take v common i will be getting del rho by del t into dv bar plus dm dot okay and then i will be having plus rho del v by del t and this dv bar let me write now a times of ds because dv bar was nearly equal to a times ds plus m dot into d okay so now you will be able to recall that i had first written the uh, mass equation and from conservation of mass equation this term inside the bracket is nothing but equal to zero okay so from conservation of mass equation this term becomes zero so ultimately what i will be getting is minus adp minus rho g a dz equal to rho a times del v by del t into ds plus m dot times dv and m dot also i can write as nothing but rho area into velocity okay is this point clear so now what i will do i will divide throughout this equation by rho a so i will divide this complete equation by rho a so if i divide this equation by rho a ultimately what i will be getting is minus dp by rho minus g into dz equal to del v by del t into ds plus v into d okay so this is what i will be getting over here fine now ultimately <clears throat> if i have to find this equation uh, so this is the differential form of equation now if i have to convert this differential form of equation into the into the algebraic form so what i can do i can consider that along this stream line say the inlet or upstream section is section 1 and this is section 2 so what i have to do i have to integrate this equation within the limits of integration 1 to 2 okay so different quantities for example for pressure term it will be from p1 to p2 for uh, uh, this elevation term it will be from z1 to z2 and for velocity term it will be from v1 to v2 okay so if i try this then ultimately what i will be getting that uh, integral of now i am also first considering the right hand side because all these quantities also i will bring to the left and put it zero so ultimately i will be able to do it integral of or let me write without limits now say integral of del v by del t into ds plus integral of 
v dv plus integral of dp by rho plus integral of g dz equal to 0. So, this is nothing but this is the generic form of Bernoulli equation. Okay, so this is the generic form. Now, if I put the further assumptions, okay, so first assumption I will invoke is that, see this VDV integration is very easy to do. Similarly, G dz also we can easily do because G is constant, I can simply integrate over Gz. But if I have to integrate the first term, then I must know the relationship of velocity with time along a streamline. Okay. And for uh, integrating third term, I must know the variation of density with the pressure. Okay. So, if I have to further simplify this equation, I can make over here two assumptions. First is I will consider the steady flow assumption. Okay. So, if I consider the steady flow assumption, then my term del V by del T is becoming 0. Fine. Second assumption. Now, only I have this third term left. So, this third term can be solved if I either know the relationship of density with pressure or if I assume that I have nothing but incompressible flow situation. So, second assumption I will made, make over here that is nothing but incompressible flow. Okay. So, if I impose this incompressible flow assumption, then ultimately what I will be getting that rho is constant. So, I can simply integrate with it. Okay. So, now if I do so, then uh, let me also put limits of integration from 1 to 2 for all. So, within these limits of integration, ultimately what I will be getting? First term is 0, integral of V dV will become V square by 2 fine plus integral of 1 by rho is constant integral of dp will become p so that is nothing but p2 minus p1 and this is also say limits of integration v2 square minus v1 square by 2 okay and this will become plus g times of z2 minus z1 equal to 0 now i will divide with 0 and take all the terms with subscript 1 to the right hand side. Okay. So, sorry, I will divide with G. I will divide with G and take all the terms with subscript 1 to the right hand side and ultimately what I will be getting V2 square by 2G plus P2 by rho G plus Z2 equal to V1 square by 2G plus P1 by rho G plus Z. Okay. So, this is nothing but the usual form of the Bernoulli equation. So, this is typically we use in many situations. Okay. So, ultimately I can say that P by rho g plus V square by 2 g plus Z is equal to constant and this is equal to say some number I am calling as H naught which is sometimes called as stagnation energy. So, total combination of all these points or in more generic sense it is also called as Bernoulli head. So, this is also called as Bernoulli head. Okay. So, you can say that pressure head plus velocity head plus potential head will be equal to constant but for what type of situation before that you must also invoke over here what are the assumptions we have taken this will be equal to constant for a steady incompressible and frictionless flow please note this point while we have applied the momentum equation at that time we have not considered the viscous stress force is coming because of the viscous stress. So, it means the assumption invoked over here is that flow is frictionless. Okay. So, Bernoulli equation is applicable only for the situations of first condition is steady, second is incompressible, third is frictionless and fourth condition is this is calculated for, for uh, this derivation is done for a stream tube of infinitesimally small size. 
the meaning of that is a stream tube of infinitesimally small size is nothing but identical to a streamline. So this equation is applicable for a streamline. Okay. If you change your application of this equation from one streamline to another streamline, then also this equation will be applicable for another streamline, but it may have some different Bernoulli head or Bernoulli constant. Okay. So this Bernoulli constant or Bernoulli head may be different because other streamline may have some different value of pressure, different value of velocity and elevation. So corresponding to that streamline will be having different. And if you are having the steady flow and uh, your streamlines are parallel and forming kind of a stream tube, then you can apply this equation for stream tube also. Okay. Now you have seen the steady flow energy equation. If you slightly compare the steady flow energy equation, in case of steady flow energy equation, almost form was similar, but that equation was taking care of your heat and work interactions within the flow. So if you are having any heat and work interaction that was accounted for in steady flow energy equation, at the same point of time, friction was also accounted for in steady flow energy equation in terms of the viscous flow. Okay. But in this particular Bernoulli equation, uh, heat and work interactions are not accounted for. At the same point of time, friction is also neglected. So it's a frictionless equation. Okay. So you must know this, the difference of applicability between the two equations. Another important point is, whenever we are talking about the Bernoulli's equation, we have derived this equation purely based on the momentum and the continuity equation. Okay. So it means I can say that Bernoulli equation is nothing but some special form of momentum equation because it is coming from the momentum and force balance along the streamline. On contrary, if I talk about the steady flow energy equation, so that is coming from energy equation. Okay, so this is the another comparison between the two. So that is coming from the balance of energies and this is coming from the balance of momentum and forces. Fine. Now let me give you certain situations and you have to tell me whether I can apply here uh, Bernoulli equation or not. Okay. Say I have put some streamlined body <coughs> inside a wind tunnel. Okay. Now you have to tell me what is the zone of applicability of Bernoulli equation and what is the zone of applicability of steady flow energy equation. So if I consider this wind tunnel, of course, in the real situation, there will be some boundary layer over here. There will be some boundary layer over here. There will be some portion of boundary layer over here and some portion of boundary layer and wake region over here. Okay. So this hatched portion over here is nothing but the portion where our frictional effects or viscous effects are dominant. Okay. Is this point clear? In this particular hatched region, our frictional and viscous effects will be dominant. So ultimately, if I have to consider the applicability of Bernoulli equation, then Bernoulli equation will be only applicable in this zone. Only in this zone I can apply. Because other than this, if I apply the Bernoulli equation, then ultimately I am going against the assumptions under which it is actually driven. Fine. This point is clear. Now another situation we can consider, say I have a duct and in this duct I have some fan over here. Can I apply Bernoulli equation between these two points 1 and 2? Can I apply, so I have a fan which is rotating and letting the flow happen from point 1 to point 2. So can you tell me uh, if I have to apply the Bernoulli equation between point 1 and 2, can I apply? Please tell me. Can I apply Bernoulli equation over here? Yes or no? Yes. No. Why? Yes? 
and frictionless and third point is no heat and work interaction but in this case whenever the impeller of the pump will be rotating so this fan will be rotating what it will do it will impart certain amount of work or energy on the fluid okay so that is not accounted for in the bernoulli's equation so here i cannot apply bernoulli equation between point 1 and 2 but i can apply steady flow energy equation okay so bernoulli is not applicable but steady flow energy equation sfe is so you can see the sfe is nothing but the more generic form of the equation okay so sfe is generic form that is applicable third situation let me tell you i have once again a duct okay in the previous one can you tell me where i can apply bernoulli equation if i take any points 1 and 2 just before the impeller then i can apply considering frictionless flow in the duct and if i take any points after this there also i can apply bernoulli equation but only thing we will be having before this impeller i will be having different bernoulli head and after this impeller i will be having different because velocities and pressure will be changed after the fine similar situation say now in place of uh, this i have electric heater this is electric resistance heater can i apply over here bernoulli equation between 1 and 2 Thus, heat transfer is also not accounted for in this. Okay, and if I once again consider that flow is frictionless, then I can apply before this and after this. Okay, so these things you must be clear about the applicability. Don't consider that everywhere you can just put the Bernoulli equation. Okay, if I have say this type of situation. so this is my station 1 station 2 3 can i apply yes so if we are considering situation is frictionless steady incompressible there is no heat and work interaction so i can simply apply the bernoulli equation okay so you must be clear about the applicability of these equations this is very very important okay okay now we have seen uh, the derivation for bernoulli equation and the comparison between sfe and bernoulli equation now we will try to see one important thing which is called as energy grade line and associated term with this is also important which is called as hydraulic grade line so there are two terms egl and hgl okay so basically if we account for the sum of all three heads of energies that is pressure head plus velocity head v square by 2g plus z and if i represent it in terms of line with respect to a datum so this head if i represent it in terms of elevation height so whatever the line i will be getting that will be my egl and from egl if i just subtract the v square by 2g if i simply consider p by rho g plus z then whatever the elevation i will be getting or line formed by this head i will be getting that is called as hgl okay and this combination of pressure head plus elevation is also called as static head okay static head because this is not because of the motion of the fluid so this v square by 2g is actually dynamic head which is coming because of the motion of the fluid 
So this is the dynamic head, this is static head and this is also popularly known as piezometric head. So it is also popularly called as piezometric head. So what is the difference is, say I have a duct, this is some duct I am having and this duct is having gradual increase in area while flow is happening from left to right. So this is my flow direction. Okay. Now. This is the inlet of the duct and this is the outlet of the duct. Okay. So if I if I put a tube over here, if I put a tube over here just at the wall, so what will be happening? From here water can enter through this tube, but velocity of water is oriented in the rightward direction it is not having any component in the vertical direction so that's why whatever the rise of fluid happening in this tube that will be purely because of the static head pressure head plus any elevation difference if say this is at some elevation z1 okay so up to this point whatever head was there that was z1 elevation and from this point to this point say it is rise of pressure is up to this point. So up to this point if fluid is rising over here, say here I have nothing but fluid filled up to this point. So this rise of fluid will be because of the pressure. Okay. This point is clear. On contrary, if I put a tube something like this. If I put a tube something like this, then what will be happening? Of course, I will be getting elevation, I will be getting pressure as well as because I am going parallel to the velocity. So, fluid will also enter with certain velocity and ultimately after rising to the height, whatever energy of the fluid is there, then it will reach to a constant level. Okay, say it is reaching to this level. Is this point clear? This point is clear? So this is called as pitot stagnation tube. So this particular arrangement which is giving us the total head, pressure head plus elevation head plus velocity head, this is called as pitot stagnation tube. Why stagnation? Because ultimately the flow which is entering into the tube that will rise to whatever maximum level it can reach and then ultimately it will become stagnant. Okay. So this is called as pitot stagnation tube. Uh, simple in simple way you can understand it like this. Say your centrifugal pump is actually pumping water. Okay. And you are pumping water to height of say 5 meters. So at height of 5 meters your pump will give you certain amount of flow rate. If you now increase the height from 5 to 10 meters, flow rate of water will decrease and if you keep on increasing the height gradually, flow rate will keep on decreasing and you will find a point where though pump is continuously pumping water, but at certain point that fluid is not coming out of the pump. So it means whatever the energy imparted by pump that has become equal to static head. And that's why it is not able to produce any velocity at that outlet. Okay. So ultimately that is something which happens in pit or stagnant tube. So press static head plus uh, this one, yeah, static head, which is pressure head plus elevation head. This will give you some constant height, but along with that, if you add the kinetic head, so whatever the additional rise of water is there, this will represent at that location nothing but V square by. 2g which is your kinetic head okay so if i have to consider the total energy so total energy at this point is nothing but represented by this total rise in height of water okay so this is my total energy and if i say that 
in this duct whatever the flow is happening this this is nothing but a frictionless situation so if this is a frictionless situation then my total energy will remain this total energy will remain constant and this line horizontal line is nothing but my egl for this situation point is clear whenever i am going further what will happen as i am moving ahead first is elevation is also increasing so with reference to the same point if i see now my elevation is somewhere over here so this is z2 okay at the same point of time velocity is velocity is what is happening to velocity it is gradually increasing area and in compressible flow situation so velocity will be decreasing okay a1 v1 equal to a2 v2 so velocity will be decreasing over here so here i will say if this was my initial velocity head so now velocity head will be only say up to this point say this was my v square by 2g okay so ultimately this will be my pressure head so this was the this will be the level if i put a tube this will be the level up to which water will rise because of the static head and if i put a tube something like this then this will be the level up to which water will rise okay so if i now join all the static heads if i join all the static heads then whatever the line i will be getting that particular line is called as nothing but hgl hydraulic rate line point is clear what is egl and what is hgl is it clear okay <clears throat> when you are having some component which is added in between the pipeline to add energy to the fluid then there will be jump in the egl rise in the egl okay and if there is a point which is extracting energy out of the fluid then there will be fall in the egl is this point clear simple example i can give you once again say same example i am having but here i have used a pump and this pump is actually imparting certain amount of energy same situation is there what was there earlier but only addition is this now impeller is actually imparting certain amount of energy so what will happen here how will my egl will look so up to this point egl will be constant okay and at this point there will be jump in energy and from this point then i will be getting new energy level okay and if you see your hgl hgl will be like this then there will be jump and then it will be like this fine so this point here if you consider friction then what will happen to egl if you also include friction say now you don't have any other component but you are only including the friction so because of friction what will happen say this was the original egl without friction now with friction egl will keep on decreasing because there is some frictional loss in that so that will be my egl and what what will happen to hgl hgl will be like this but of course there will be some change in its flow path okay fine so what is the meaning of energy grade line and uh, hydraulic grade line is it clear <coughs> typically if i have open channel flow situation in case of open channel flow situation my height of the free surface will be nothing but equal to the what 
PGL और HGL First, what do you mean by open channel flow? No upper boundary. Yes, no upper boundary, like flow in rivers, etc. Okay. So, in case of open channel flow, we know that water level is having certain height. Okay. So, does that water level represent the free surface of water? Is it represent? HGL or EGL? EGL. Sure. Please tell me. In an open channel flow situation, the height of the free surface will represent HGL or EGL? HGL. Please say something. If you have understood, then say something. HGL. HGL, yes. Because whenever free surface is there, it is not completely static, it is also moving in the forward direction. So it is having some kinetic height. So till now we have not accounted for the kinetic height. Okay, so height of free surface in an open channel flow nothing but represents the hydraulic flow. Fine. So wherever in an open channel flow, Water level is decreasing, free surface is decreasing. It means your HGL is following the same path. Okay. So, why is kinetic head considered to have No, kinetic head, why? We have not considered in height because flow is taking place in horizontal direction. Okay. If flow is taking place in vertical direction, then ultimately it will represent easier. But whenever we see the open channel flow, flow happens parallel to the bottom surface. In ideal situation, flow happens parallel to the bottom surface. So when flow velocity is in horizontal direction, its contribution is not coming in rising the height. So height is only standing because of the pressure and the elevation height. Okay. So that's why the height of free surface of water in open channel flow uh, represents actually HGL. Fine. Okay, now let's try to see the applications of Bernoulli equation for some uh, situation, say I have a tank, this is tank of some area A1 and then from this tank some outlet is connected and I have to determine the velocity of the fluid coming out through this outlet or say flow rate Q which is coming out through this out. Okay. So say now the different conditions are given. This initial water level is Z1. This here elevation is Z2. Area here is A2. Area of the tank is A1. Okay. So now given this situation say I have some fluid field over here you have to determine what is the flow rate of fluid through this outer tube. So, how to solve this situation? How to do it? Please tell me. Q is flow rate, volumetric flow rate. Okay, let me write it the more usual symbol which we are using v dot v is for volume sorry v bar is for volume and dot is for volumetric flow rate v bar dot how i can do it please tell me bernoulli equation yes Yes, so let me assume this is my station 1, this is station 2 and I will apply Bernoulli equation P1 by rho g plus V1 square by 2g plus Z1 equal to P2 by rho g plus V2 square by 2g plus Z2. Okay, so now here pressure is 
P atmospheric. Here also pressure is whenever this jet is coming out of the tank, it is nothing but coming at atmospheric pressure condition. Okay, so you have to remember one thing into mind. Whenever a jet comes out of any pipe, if it is coming under the sonic flow condition, subsonic flow condition, it's or even up to Mach number of one. If it is coming out at the sonic flow conditions, then its pressure is equal to P atmospheric. Okay, but if it comes at supersonic condition, other than Mach number one, then its pressure can be higher than atmospheric. Okay. So whenever jet or fluid comes out of the pipe, if it comes at sonic conditions, then it will be at atmospheric pressure. If it comes at supersonic conditions, then it will be at it can be at above than the atmospheric pressure conditions. Huh? Okay, so now this is P atmospheric, this is P atmospheric. So these two terms will be cancelling out. Fine. Now I cannot say here velocity is zero because whenever water will come out of the tank, depending upon area of the tank flow will be there. So say it is having V1 velocity. So ultimately what I will be getting that V2 minus V1 square is nothing but Z2 minus Z1 times 2. Okay. But I, what we have to do? We have to find out V2 not V1. So how to find out V2? Continuity, continuity. continuity equation. So majority of the times you will be finding whenever we are applying the Bernoulli equation, we have to use continuity equation along with this. Okay, so continuity equation is a very handy tool for the application of Bernoulli equation. So continuity equation for incompressible flow situation is A1 V1 equal to A2 V2. From here I will get V1 equal to A2 by A1 into V2 and ultimately V2 square into 1 minus a2 by a1 square will be becoming 2g times z2 minus z1 okay now what i can say i can say that v2 will be equal to square root of 2g z2 minus z1 divided by 1 minus a2 Square root of this quantity. Okay. Now I can invoke another assumption that A2 is very smaller than A1. So now what will be happening? A2 by A1 square will become 0. Okay. So ultimately I will be getting that velocity at point 2 is nothing but equal to So we have considered velocity equal to V1 equal to 0 but in some other way Okay So simple point is So this equation was derived I think somewhere in 1664 or 1614 Okay. So this is the velocity uh, which will be coming out of the tank. So one simple thing you can see over here is that if velocity, uh, if uh, your elevation difference, I think I have written it wrongly, this should be Z1 minus Z2. Sorry. Please make this correction. This should be So one simple outcome of this solution is that this velocity value is actually independent of the fluid properties. It is purely dependent on head. Okay. It is neither dependent on density nor it is dependent on viscosity. Of course viscosity is not coming because we are applying this, uh, this one. Uh, uh, we are taking the assumption of frictionless flow. Okay, so viscosity is of course not the part, but it does not depend upon density of the fluid medium. 
so if you put a fluid of density equal to 1000 density equal to 800 density equal to 1200 whatever fluid you put you will be finding the same product considering that situation is it's less okay so one important observation of this is that this particular velocity which is coming out of the tank is actually independent of the fluid properties for frictionless and steady flow situations so if you have to now calculate discharge that is very simple you can actually calculate discharge as q equal to rho times uh, sorry let me write discharge v bar dot equal to area times into v2 okay now another very interesting application of bernoulli equation is actually siphoning effect so do you know what is siphon and siphoning effect you might have observed sometimes if say some pipe is dipped inside a water tank and if other end of the pipe is below the surface of the tank then what happens yes water comes out of that pipe without any passing so that is called as siphoning effect okay so we can also explain the siphoning effect with the help of Bernoulli equation okay so let us consider that I have a tank and through this tank I have some pipe over here connected like this okay so water is filled in the tank up to this point so this is a elevation z1 with reference to the surface of the tank and this is say point number 2 and this elevation is z2 with reference to the surface of the tank and it is actually it will be negative okay now say this elevation of highest point over here is z3 and say my pipe is dip inside the tank up to depth up to elevation sorry whenever I am talking about the z3 it has to be measured from this point and say this is my z4 okay so now let's consider that some flow is coming out of this pipe so we have to determine this velocity how much will be this velocity and we don't have any pump connected over here okay so what i can simply do this is my station one this is my station two so i can simply apply the bernoulli equation between one and two okay so if i do so p1 by rho g plus v1 square by 2g plus z1 will be equal to plus z2 okay now here also pressure is atmospheric here also pressure is atmospheric so these two terms will be cancelling out and ultimately what i will be getting now i will take your assumption that tank is of larger size so if tank is of larger size then v1 will be nearly equal to 0 okay so v1 square by 2g is 0 so ultimately I will be getting that V2 is nothing but 2G times Z1 minus Z2 and square root of this. So you can see over here that this Z2 with reference to the surface of the tank is nothing but negative. So as it is negative it means that it means that this term will keep on adding and will lead to increase in velocity. Okay. So as long as we are keeping the outlet of pipe below the surface of the tank then velocity of this flow will keep on increasing and if I am raising this pipe if I am raising this pipe then velocity will keep on decreasing and once it reaches to the surface of the tank then it will become zero okay so ultimate point is that these two locations z3 and z4 is not having any role on the flow velocity so this z3 can be any height but one important point we have to note from here is that when the flow is happening through the pipe at this point pressure is atmospheric so for the flow to happen of course this pressure at z3 point should be lower than the atmospheric pressure is this one clear so pressure at location 3 should be less than the atmospheric pressure so when pressure is 
low at the atmospheric pressure if i keep on increasing the elevation z3 then the value of pressure will keep on decreasing okay and if value of pressure becomes less than the vapor pressure then this liquid will actually start vaporizing so if liquid start vaporizing then there i can have sudden increase in pressure and then flow can be stopped actually so that's why whenever we are keeping this z3 elevation we have to keep in mind that this should not go beyond this should not go beyond a limit where pressure is going below the vapor pressure okay is this point clear this tube is called as siphon and you can call it as siphon effect or siphon okay so many times you will be experiencing that you need to just dip pipe inside the tank and then you can see the flow is actually directly coming without any effect okay okay so we will stop at this point